So, the future of DC movies is about to undergo a serious change, with new leadership and a new direction that should, in theory, allow for new characters and heroes to get the spotlight. And there's one hero that I think desperately needs a movie, something to really understand the character and show the world just how important he can be. The billionaire turned superhero, the playboy who underwent a traumatic experience, stranded and trapped away from home, that forced him to see the error of his ways, and when he returned home, he abandoned his old habits and used his wealth, skills, and resources to make the world a better place, all while rocking a signature goatee. No, wait, hang on, not, not that guy? There we go. This video is brought to you by Hero Wars. Hey, uh, uh, what are you doing? Um, I'm trying to do the ad read. Hey, what about my world? Oh, geez, um, what is this, like some kind of childish game? That is not true. Hero Wars has vibrant graphics, cool gameplay, and a user-friendly interface. Okay, I mean, this is a pretty awkward bit for the ad, but I guess I could check it out. So, uh, okay, okay, he's gone. <clears throat> we fail, we fall, we lose control. Enough, stand up and play your role. You ask me, Troy, what's going on? I tell you, Hero Wars is on. <laughs> It is an epic, crazy game with many heroes, modes, and fame. Brave and strong knight Galahad must save the world from tearing apart. Archdemon took control on land, but Team of Heroes is in your hand. Upgrade them, teach them, mix them up, and show the villain what is up. Get to arena, show some skill, and power of a strongest will. The tower waits for you to come. All 50 levels you can farm. Be sure come back another day. New content rushing all the way. Cool events, bosses, modes, and loot. Amazing heroes. It feels good. <laughs> 100 million can't mistake, Hero Wars is best for break. Become a legend, claim your gift, five heroes, gems, and gold to lift. Mobile gamer or PC, the different story you will see. Right now, go on and download using my link or QR code. <coughs> oh boy, uh, I don't know what just happened. And thanks so much to Hero Wars for sponsoring this video and making this video possible because I don't do Green Arrow content very much and I wouldn't be able to do it without them. So keep that in mind. Now, contrary to what some may believe, and what a certain CW show will tell you, Green Arrow is more than just Batman with a bow. Although, when he was first created in 1941, that description wasn't too far off, with an arrow cave, and an arrow car, and an arrow plane, as well as his own young mass sidekick who grew to hate him and left to join the Teen Titans. But over time, and thanks largely in part to the late comic legends Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill, Oliver Queen evolved and changed into his own character that stands away from the Caped Crusader. First and foremost, Oliver Queen is incredibly stubborn and headstrong. After his time on the island, he forced forced himself to take a long look in the mirror at the person he was, at the decisions he was making, at the ways he was using his money, and most importantly, at the entirely broken system that existed around him. A system that oppresses people, takes advantage of the underrepresented, forced people out of their homes for profit, and how he was fundamentally a part of and benefiting from that system. A lot of people will tell you that superheroes shouldn't get political, that they're just supposed to be escapism and fun. But the character of Green Arrow kind of spits in the face of that mindset. He's direct and upfront about his beliefs, even to a fault. He's the kind of character that will demand the people on the ground level be treated equally and fairly and not be abused by a system or the wealthy or those in power. And he knows all of this because he used to be a part of that system and he'll stop at nothing to keep people from using it like he did. Even if it means sending a boxing glove arrow right to the face. And before you say anything about, oh, that'll never happen. James Gunn made a movie where a giant starfish was a blatant in your face metaphor for the horrors of American imperialism. I'm gonna have to assume assume he's cool with at least going a little to the left for green f***ing arrow? James Gunn has said that he loves Green Arrow, so it's definitely within the realm of possibility to see the Emerald Archer on the big screen. For the longest time, DC has really emphasized the scale of their characters. An all-powerful alien, a demigod warrior, the world's greatest detective, the fastest man alive. These core members of the Justice League are always put on a pedestal, both in-universe and out, and DC as of late has really leaned heavily into their godhood, especially in the last cinematic universe. But if you ask me, DC characters are at their best when they take a step back and think smaller. These grand, larger-than-life gods on Earth stopping and saving a cat out of a tree or making sure that a child is safe. In my opinion, it's these moments, this care for the sanctity of all life, that makes the character special. And so where does that leave Green Arrow? I think the best way that they've used his character in connection to the rest of the universe was in Justice League Unlimited. JLU is probably my favorite of all the DC animated shows. I love the way that it gave light to lesser-known DC characters like Question, Huntress, Booster Gold, Captain Atom, and it probably has my favorite depiction of Green Arrow. And assuming we'll eventually get another crack at the Justice League, on film, I think it's the perfect starting point for how his character should fit within the team and the rest 
rest of the universe as a whole. From the opening moments of the first episode, we see Oliver stopping a small time robbery, only to be whisked away to the massive watchtower with thousands of other heroes just like him, as the Justice League has opened up its doors to nearly every hero on the planet as a unified team. Initially, he denies his invitation to the new initiative, saying that he's there to protect the little guy and a team this big with so many moving parts is undoubtedly going to lose sight of that. But over the course of the episode, he realizes what he brings to the table and why Batman was so insistent on this invitation. When people like Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman get put on such a high pedestal, there comes a fear that they'll lose sight of those smaller moments. My favorite thing about those characters is that they never do lose that, but still, when you sit on a satellite above Earth for so long, realistically, it makes sense to forget about the people on the ground. And Green Arrow's role in all of this and his role in the Justice League, despite not having super speed or super strength or being the world's best martial artist or even being the world's best archer, is to make sure that that never happens. To make sure that these heroes, no matter how high the pedestal gets, no matter how big of a threat they may face, to always ground them and remind them who they're fighting for the little guy. Now, that's all well and good for a group setting like the Justice League, but what could a solo Green Arrow movie look like? One of the most important things that they have to get right is the relationship with Black Canary. Green Arrow and Black Canary's romance is one of the most famous in comics, and arguably one of the most important, along with Clark Kent and Lois Lane, and a hot take here, I guess, Peter Parker and Mary Jane. I don't know why that's a hot take. Why, when did that become a hot take? And I think if we were to get these characters in this new DC universe, we could see that relationship develop and grow over time. Honestly, a good Green Arrow movie should be basically the superhero equivalent of a rom-com, as we see these two form the basis of their relationship. And the same applies to the rest of the Arrow family. Sadly, they rarely ever get any chance at spotlight nowadays, but characters like Emiko Queen, Mia Dearden, Connor Hawk, and especially Roy Harper are so integral to Oliver and his character that it would be a shame to leave him out. The other thing that I have to get right is the casting. Now, uh, I'm just gonna say it. I really, really, really don't like the Charlie Hunnam fan cast that everybody likes to throw around. Every time I see someone bring it up or see someone Photoshop him into a Green Arrow costume, it feels like it's done less with the character of Oliver Queen in mind and more so because he's the only guy with blonde hair that you know of that can rock a goatee. I know fan casts in general tend to just be about looks, but this one in particular just, just, it just, it just bugs me. Now I'm not a casting director, so I'm not even gonna begin to try and pick someone because realistically this character will probably be played by an unknown. But in my opinion, to cast a good Green Arrow, you really need someone who can fully understand the bleeding heart politics of the character, in addition to the action and the comedy. Someone who recognizes the system around us is fundamentally broken and hurting people, and having a desperate need to fix it against all odds, no matter what it takes or who it might piss off. Now, of course, actors can act and stuff like that, but I really would love to see this mentality and those beliefs from the actor themselves. And I'm not talking just Instagram posts or vague calls to action during award speeches. I'm talking out there, down in the streets, protesting with the people and calling for their governments and their employers to make the change that the world so desperately needs. At the time of Recording this, the only person that comes to mind that does that is John Boyega. He can rock both the comedic and the serious sides of the character, and the only thing keeping me from going all in on this fan casting is uh, I haven't seen him with a beard yet. Grow the beard, John. John. If you're watching this, grow out the beard. And I think that same mentality applies to the director. I think that the future of DC and superhero media as a whole lies in director freedom. And so unlike the actor, I would want a more experienced and well-known director to take on this movie. Unless if it's me, in that case, I'll do it for free, James Gunner. And my pick for director is someone who's proven time and time again to have a deep and burning hatred for the wealthy. And most importantly, someone who would just piss off all the right people, which a good Green Arrow story should always do. And that, is none other than Ryan Johnson. Oh boy, these comments are gonna be really fun. I mean, just take a look at any of his work. Even if you don't love The Last Jedi, Knives Out is one of my favorite movies ever, Glass Onion was fantastic, and his show Poker Face is criminally underrated. I was gonna do a video on it, and then I remember nobody watched it because it was on Peacock. And so not only is this guy just a great director, but most importantly, he reminds us time and time again how much he just hates rich people. Can we just take a second and fully abbreviate this moment? And before you say anything, Yes, I know it's ironic to say all of this on a sponsored video. As for the plot of the movie, I don't want to go too in depth with it right now because I would really want to do a big full pre-write video. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know down below and uh, hit the like button so I can tell if uh, Green Arrow content even does well before I spend hours of my life making that. But for the villains, Green Arrow has a really fantastic rogues gallery that unfortunately doesn't ever get much spotlight. I mean, the show just used Batman villains for half the time. You have Merlin, the Dark Archer, Count Vertigo, Brick. I'm a big fan of Onomatopoeia. I think he's a really fun character and a really cool concept. Or you could pull from the recent stuff like Ben Percy's Rebirth run where they introduced the Ninth Circle, a criminal underground of the wealthy that funds supervillains all over the world like it's a supervillain bank. It's really fun. I think it could be really interesting to explore Oliver during his first year as Green Arrow. We spend a little bit of time on the island, meeting Black Canary, and figuring out his mission. Maybe he starts out thinking that he can be like Batman, dark and brooding and mysterious, but he learns to instead be more open and communicate with the people of Star City on the ground level. Maybe he could even transition from an armored hooded suit to the more classic Robin Hood style of costume to visualize that change. And then that way we can have both costumes, the hood 
hood and the hat because honestly, I can never tell which one I like more. It just, it depends on the context. A lot of people ask me who my favorite superhero is and like most things, I can't ever really decide. But for the most part, it tends to flip around between Spider-Man, Superman, and Green Arrow. Because when they're written right, they each represent an aspect of the superhero myth and the ideology that I really love. There's a line from Shakespeare's Twelfth Night that I think about a lot. Some men are born great. Some men achieve greatness and some men have greatness thrust upon them. It's overused like crazy, but it's just stuck with me. And I think it perfectly encaptures those three characters. Spider-Man has his power thrust upon him. He was a normal kid who was forced to live with the consequences and the burden of responsibility. Superman was born great, a being that was sent from above, raised by the kindest souls on the planet who exists solely to spread that same message of kindness. And Oliver Queen achieved his greatness, not in some self-made billionaire sense of American individualism or anything, but he truly rose from nothing into something special. He was a whiny little Nepo baby who had everything given to him on a silver platter and the entire system existed solely to serve him, who underwent something horrifically traumatic and through that fire and through that hell recognized those mistakes and rose up and became something great. Is he perfect? No, absolutely not. Not not even a little bit, honestly. He fucks up all the time. But no matter what, he's constantly trying. And he never, not even for a second, regresses back to the person he was before his time on the island. He saw firsthand the injustices of the world and was forced to learn that he was in some way responsible. And when he returned home, he made it his goal, his mission, to do everything he can to fix that broken system. Whether that means giving away all his money to the homeless, threatening a corrupt politician, punching a dirty cop in the face, even standing up to the entire justice league on his own, Oliver Queen will stop at nothing to make sure that someone is looking out for the little guy. And James Gunn, if for any reason you might be watching this, I think that'd be pretty cool to see in a movie. By the way, uh, there's a new Green Arrow comic coming out uh, tomorrow by the time the video releases. It's just a miniseries for now, but they said if it performs well enough, then DC will expand it into a full ongoing title, which is something that Green Arrow hasn't had for years. So if you're a fan of Green Arrow or if you're a fan of me and you just want to see me be happy, uh, please pick up Green Arrow number one by Josh Williamson and Sean Isaacs. I have a link down below where you can do that digitally and also links to other Green Arrow comics that I'd recommend to new readers. But what would you want to see from a potential Green Arrow movie? And what other heroes do you think deserve a shot at this new DCU? Thanks again to Hero Wars for sponsoring this video. You can download and start playing it right now. Oh, God, he's back. If you like this video, be sure to the like button and subscribe. Special thanks to Alto the Sting, Anz, Already Done It, Cabbage Boy, Cassidy Bond, Chicken McDoofus, Cosmic Tragedy, Eden Kenna, Iron Ninja, Jake Selig, Jonah, Corey's Not Fresh, Lime Spice XL, Logan Triplet Films, Spectacular Clyde, Tim Newfeld, Troy says Bio Razor is Lame, Tyler Goodrich, Josh Kapoor, Zachary Stonebreaker, Zero to Hero 148, and ZZ Toasty for being spectacular fanboys on my Patreon. This has been Troy Boy 17, coming at you live. Be responsible, and I'll see you around.